Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. I know I'm gonna start my day off with my absolutely beautiful blue dart frogs. Of course, these are the Azurus. There's about 100 species of dart frogs, poison dart frogs, around the world, with the majority of them in Central South America, but the Azurus are actually from Suriname. Now, can you imagine such a cute little, unbelievably dog? I mean, these things look like little toys. They're so incredible. And the truth is, these guys can be pretty deadly, to be totally honest with you. Now, you wonder, if I were to touch them right now, what would happen? to me well the truth is is that in captivity there's not a lot that would happen to be honest with you it's all about what they eat in the wild now we actually work with three species oh doogie where did that guy come from we work with three species here at the Repterima dart frog the black and yellow ones the dying dart frogs are absolutely incredible but again what happens in the wild these guys are eating mainly ants that have alkaloid molecules that are actually pretty poisonous right well the dart frogs can eat them and actually store that alkaloid without harm harming the dart frog in its secretion gland. Now these bright colors like this actually are what kind of wards off the predators saying, hey listen, I'm really colorful. That means that I am poisonous. Pretty cool clutch of ball pythons that hatch out. This was actually a ghost fire female bred to a champagne hat for ghosts. So uh, interestingly enough, I'm not 100% sure we hit really anything fire, which is kind of weird because uh, I would have expected to see some fire stuff, but it looks like we hit a swatch of mimosas. Now the mimosas are the ghost or the hypo champagne ball pythons and there's a whole bunch of them in here. I mean it's really really cool that we got so many actual uh, hypos when it came to the mimosa stuff. We only got one normal hypo ball python which is right here. This is the only one that might be a fire. This might be a hypo fire but I can't tell for sure. It's a hard to say. Once it sheds I'll have a little bit of a better idea but the truth is, is it's really hard to see here but a bunch of these babies look super super cool and this little dude has this cool paradoxing right here. I mean, look at how awesome that is. And paradoxing is just some kind of normally pattern that kind of bleeds through. So when you have like two different expressions going together, so it's kind of cool. I definitely like this thing. It's so awesome. So all in all, a really beautiful clutch of mimosas, a ghost, uh, and some hats and stuff like that. But nevertheless, uh, I was super happy with the odds on this clutch. This clutch that hatched was actually a lemon blast that was heifer VPI axanthic, and it was bred to a double hat lavender snow. So the fact is, is that we actually only hit one axanthic to get in this whole clutch, but these are all now possible double head snows. We have a little lemon blast right here. These are just normals here. The pastel here kind of has that expression of the axanthic, so it's probably a head axanthic. We can't sell it as a head axanthic because it's just a probable one, but nevertheless, it probably is if we decide to raise up, and it could be possibly have for lavender as well. Same thing here. You can kind of see this lemon blast compared to this lemon blast how it looks so faded. That faded typically means that it's het for axanthic. Again, we won't be able to sell it that way, but if it's a female, we may raise it up knowing that there's probably a 99% chance that it's het. And then we ended up hatching this little dude here, which is unbelievable. This is actually a pastel axanthic that is possible het for lavender. So that is cool. So that could be a pastel lavender snowmaker down the road. Really just an absolutely gorgeous animal. So although we didn't hit the odds when it came to axanthics in this clutch, we only got one little baby. We still have a bunch of really cool snakes and again we'll sex them out. Probably raise up a few females just to kind of bolster that lavender snow project that we're raising up. So uh, really cool and this thing is a ripper. These are the tank powder blues right here and again with some animals, when they have bright colors like milk snakes, that warning signal is to say, hey, I'm poisonous, but they're not. In this case, these guys actually are poisonous. Believe it or not, there's the poison golden frog from Colombia that is said that if a human actually even just holds it, it could be lethal. That's right. I mean, these guys can be deadly, some of them. Some are certainly more toxic than others, but it's all about that alkaloid. And certainly what happens in the wild is that back in the day, the natives would actually catch these guys obviously very safely and roll their darts in order to hunt and that dart and the poison on that dart was fatal enough that could actually kill their prey hence the name poison dart frog <laughs> dog i cannot tell you how excited i am about this clutch because oh my god this was actually a het albino scale is bred to a red line female that red line beautiful court didn't even know she was het scaleless and guess what we have all kinds of scaleless but not just normal scaleless we have an albino scaleless right here which is that red line scaleless that is absolutely incredible which i was not expecting then get this we have a little aneurythristic right here this is the the black scaleless corns, which are probably one of the prettiest. And then it looks like we have a 
ghost scaleless as well. So we produce a ghost scaleless, an andri scaleless, an albino scaleless, some normals, some snows, all kinds of different clutches in this clutch. I was not expecting this outcome at all. Hang on one second. It's got snakes all over the place. Whew, I tell you what, sometimes it is literally opening a can of worms, I tell you what, but I was not expecting that at all. We got the ghost scaleless, the andri scaleless, we've got uh, albino scales, all this stuff from an animal that I didn't even know was heifer scaleless. So sometimes it goes both ways, right? We've had some possible heads that didn't prove out to be head. Now we have an animal we didn't even know was het that proved out and produced some banger babies. I tell you, ghost scaleless and andri scaleless are some of my favorite corn snakes, so that is absolutely incredible. So you may ask yourself, Brian, why are you working with animals that could kill you? The truth is, in captivity, these guys don't eat those ants with that alkaloid. They eat fruit flies and other things like that that don't have the toxin in them. So they actually have very low toxin levels. I mean, all frogs will have a little bit of toxin. Even the leopard frog you find in your backyard has some toxin. But the fact is, is that I could handle these guys. I could probably even eat them and have very little effects. Now, I don't handle them because the oils on our hand actually can hurt the animal itself. So we always wear gloves if we have to service the enclosure. And of course, I'm not gonna eat them. But the fact is, is that they're not extremely toxic in this sense. But the truth is, is that that alkaloid molecule can actually be pretty important when it comes to medical research. And I always talk about how important it is to preserve the wild and conservation, right? Because believe it or not, there is a pharmaceutical company that has used the secretion from dart frogs to actually make a painkiller. It's a non-opioid painkiller that is non-addictive and it doesn't have all the side effects like sleepiness. As a matter of fact, it has the opposite opposite, you become more alert and it's non-addictive. I mean, without these dart frogs and their potential poison, that painkiller wouldn't be made. Think of what else is in the rainforest that we can make. You know, cures for cancer, cures for all kinds of diseases. And this little dart frog here, although it may seem kind of ominous in the fact that it's poisonous, actually is going to help tons of people in the future. I really need to make a jingle for baby colubrid time. You know, we, we were missing the egg time jingle. Uh, so give me some ideas in the comments what you think we should do jingle-wise with baby colubrids because we have some baby colubrids hatching every single day you guys know this and this is amazing this is actually some abbott's oka teas that are scaleless and holy moly look at these monkeys right here there's a few of these guys that are absolute rippers so i'm going to put them in the water right here and this one down here actually has even more interesting pattern to it just really really cool i'm going to shut these guys up on this side so we could take a little closer look at these scaleless but i tell you what the abbott scaleless are incredible but look at that one right there it's just lacking all the pattern on the front half of its body and it's got a really wild pattern. I mean, that thing is so absolutely adorable. And the Abbott's Okatee scaleless, I think are some of the best scaleless corn snakes out there. I'm gonna be honest with you. I couldn't be more happy. Holy moly, the three are amazing. But this one patternless thing here, oh my gosh, that thing is crazy. So although poisonous and pretty fatal in the wild, these guys are really benign in captivity. And you can see, if you ever wanna have a cool terrarium paludarium, whatever the case may be, poison dart frogs are amazing. With a hundred species, they are so diverse and incredible. I love these guys, and although we only work with three species, we definitely are going to be adding more because they're absolutely wonderful. I love them to death, and you guys know that I get so much joy out of feeding them each and every day. What amazing animals. All right, guys, you ready to cut some eggs? We've got two, four, six, seven eggs to cut. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I've cut a couple clutches already that that black pewter lesser cypress was supposed to be the dad, and he hasn't bothered anything. We're, I mean, the banana entry pin is awesome. Don't get me wrong. That's going to be cool. But I really want to see some babies from that black pewter lesser cypress. So let's cross our fingers and hope for that and hope we don't see any bananas. If we see bananas, I'm not going to cry about it, but I really want to see that animal. Let's just jump into egg number one. Here we go. What are we going to get? What are we going to get right up the rip? Hmm, let's see. What is that? What is this? It's a pinstripe. A pinstripe. That's not a good, that's not a good uh, thing, guys, because that means that the banana and she pin is probably the father. Let's just keep going. And again, you can have dual father clutches, but uh, that was a disappointment. I don't know why. I saw that black pewter lesser cypher male breed a lot, and he's such a beautiful snake. But he hasn't fathered anything, so let's just uh, see if maybe some of these eggs are his uh, offspring. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Again, this has been a weird year in a lot of ways. Another just normal pinstripe. Hmm. What do you know? No bananas, no entries, no anything, just pinstripes. So 
Uh, again, some really good things and some really not so good things this year, but we have such a long way to go. I mean, we still have like 130 clutches to cut. So we're gonna have some good clutches and some bad clutches. Let's just keep going. Let's see what we got here. What do we have here? It's always exciting, no matter what, especially sometimes with dual father clutches, because you never know. Okay, this is just pure. This is just an Enchi pinstripe. So we definitely know the banana Enchi pin is the dad. We haven't had any bananas yet, but that is an Enchi pin and a really pretty one at that. Egg number four. What do we have? What do we have? Come on. Come on, little leggy. Definitely have a banana here. And definitely have a banana. Ooh, that's really pretty. That's a banana Enchi pin for sure and a really good example of one. That is about as good of a banana entry pin as you're going to get. So that is absolutely awesome. Ooh, that's pretty. All right, three more eggs. And there's still always a possibility that one of these eggs could be fathered by that one male. Uh, it happens all the time, but we just have to wait to see. Again, another pinstripe. So it's weird. You know what? Every single egg has been a pinstripe, either a pinstripe or an entry pinstripe or a banana entry pin. Nothing other than that, which is kind of strange. Two more eggs. What do we have? Come on, give me something. It'd be cool to one. I, I gotta believe that one egg I'm gonna cut this year is gonna blow us away. And ooh, another really pretty banana enchi pin. Ooh, another smoker right there. Ooh, doggy, that thing is beautiful. So, but like I said, there's gonna be a surprise. You know, with the next 1,200 eggs we're gonna cut, there's gonna be something that we're gonna be like, what in the world? That thing is crazy. It's purple and blue and has hair or something. I don't know. Last egg, let's just go ahead and do it. All right, here we go, last egg. What do we have? If we get all pinstripes in this clutch, ah, the last egg is not a pinstripe. It is a banana, and it is definitely an Enchi banana, and a really pretty Enchi banana at that, to be honest with you. So out of all the eggs, we had pinstripes in every single egg until the very last one. Uh, again, a little disappointed that that black pewter lesser cypress male wasn't the dad, but still some really gorgeous babies. Got my gloves on so I can unbox <laughs> some stuff that you guys sent me. Uh, this is actually from North Carolina. Looks like some material. I don't know if it's shirts or what it is. Oh, it looks like a hoodie. Oh, okay. Oh my gosh. Oh, that is dope. Oh, let me guess, a sloth. A sloth hoodie! Wait, wait. With a $100 bill with the sloth on it. <laughs> For the sloth oh my god, that is awesome. <laughs> love it, love it. Oh, I love that. And you know, with this gosh. fall, you're gonna see me sporting this in this fall. I guarantee Thanks. you. Thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I love it, guys. I love it. Uh, this is actually That's from um, from California. Ugh. These gloves protect me from hurting myself. Yeah. Next, we're gonna need a chainmail vest. <laughs> a neck, something for the neck for sure. Here, let me. I no, keep them on. Gotta keep the gloves off. No, you can't control yourself. Greetings from another converted non-snake person. I've enjoyed every episode of the vlog, and it doesn't matter what you do or what <laughs> reptile you spotlight, I learned something. Thank you so much. In close to the picture was drawn by my friend of mine's. That's a beautiful bearded dragon. Look at how cute. It looks like Flamin' Hot Cheeto. Yeah, uh, I thought of the Reptarium when I saw it, so I appreciate that. Please open on the vlog. Uh, post her on your site. She is a struggling artist. Uh, so what is your artist and friend's name? Um, this is Mindy that sent Thank it to you. us, but the artist is actually Jillian Lambert Art. So uh, right there, Very Jillian cool. Lambert Art. Go show Very some cool. love because this is an awesome thing. Look at how cute that is. That is awesome. We'll hang that up for sure. I know you both work out religiously, and I want to give you a pair of our deadlifting yoga socks. Socks. <laughs> <laughs> for both of you. Uh, thank you. So, that is awesome. Thank you so much. So this is actually Story Feast, Vice President of Operations. So thank you so much. I appreciate that. Are they the that. same? So they, what are these? They're powerlifting so, yoga socks? I will uh, mm -hmm. use them tomorrow. Oh my God. If I show up to the gym like this, oh my God. We should God. wear them on the same day together. We should, we should do it together. So let us look at these things. <laughs> so uh, do they help you power lift? I don't know, but holy crap. I sweat a lot and these are so thick. I'm gonna totally but wear them. I will I'll wear, wear these. Them. Oh my god, I'm gonna wear these tomorrow. I'm yeah, I'm in. Let's do it together. Let's go to the gym. At the, we'll do go to the gym. We'll, this will be fun. This will be fun. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So we learned about poison dart frogs. We got to cut some snake eggs. We saw baby snakes. I mean, what more can you want out of a day? I mean, I would say it's pretty incredible. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it, as a matter of fact, here's a playlist of cutting a bunch more eggs if you so choose. Can you also do me a favor? Right up here, you can subscribe to my podcast channel called Checking In every Wednesday. Friday, Noah does choices. Uh, that is not for kids. But the Wednesday ones is on this side. You can subscribe to this one. 
Vlog channel, please turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.